Well, first of all, I want to thank the media for being here to uh, help us put this initiative out. I think this is a great idea for the community out there. I'd like to thank my command staff for being here as well. And also, I want to especially thank Dr. Thompson with the uh, Richmond County. He's Richmond County Assistant Administrator, and we appreciate him being always supporting us, all of our initiatives. So we just want to kind of talk a little bit about this initiative we have. Uh, we're here to unveil a new online tool. Um, this, this will help our department and citizens um, we serve prepare for emergencies through um, collaboration. As a fire department, we always try to uh, pre-plan buildings, those structures that we know that we need to go into, the possibility of going into for any type of emergency. This is no different. When we pre-plan those buildings, we go in, we try to identify what electrical turn-off is, the stand pipes, uh, uh, sprinkler system turn-offs um, are, just anything that's pertinent um, that we need to know when we go into that facility. So what we're to unveil today is uh, called Community Connect. And what this is designed to do is, let's say if uh, oftentimes we may get um, just letters from people saying that I got this type of issue in my home, can you put it in our CAD? And we'll put those in our CAD. So what we're doing today is we're giving people opportunity to do what it's called, they're gonna be actually pre-planning their own home. And this will give us information if we go to that home, if there is some type of issue that's going on, let's say somebody's bedridden, if you have a key, uh, elderly person, they got a key hidden someplace, we can put that, inf they can put that information into that system. And what we want people to do is really put whatever you feel comfortable into that information for us as we respond to your, to your home. And certainly when we get there, we want, we want to make every effort to make sure we're helping you. So this is what we're doing. Actually, we're pre-planning. Are you helping us to pre-plan your property? The one thing I can say about this also, it, it is safe. This information will not be distributed to anyone, only to the fire service and our responding units as they begin to uh, respond to your, your location. So what you're actually doing is helping us lay out your property. So we know where all those, if you got pets there, if you got a small child there, again, if, you, if you're an elderly person, you have a key hidden someplace, opposed to putting that information on the radio, we want you to put that information in our app. And certainly we're gonna be talking about that and we'll actually do a demonstration how you can get to, get to that app. So, Again, I appreciate you all being here. Uh, this is something that uh, we feel real good about. Uh, I think that also is one of those things that we could uh, not only be, feel good about, but something that's gonna keep the public safe uh, in the event that we respond to your home. And we know that you got certain ailments going on or uh, you got certain needs. So again, so what I'm gonna do at this time is I'm gonna get out the way I'm going to let Chief Roche come up. He's going to kind of walk you through this device. Chief Roche. So right now what we'll do, we'll give you a live demonstration of how the information actually works. So our PIO, Mike DeSuma, will go into his account, and he's going to show you how he created an account, and then he's going to show you what information that he put in there. So go ahead, Mike. Now it'll be on the screen here. So it's real easy. You'll basically log in through your, through your email account. You'll create a password that's unique to you. One of the, the, the best features about the system is every year, the system will automatically email the individual back, making sure that that account is still uh, accurate and that is being kept up with. So Mike's already logged in, he's into a system. Now, Mike's gonna show you what, what information he put in there. So he's putting in his basic contact information. Why is that important? Well, because when we get an alarm at let's say two or three in the morning, perhaps the person's on vacation, they're out of town, whatever the situation may be, now we have the resources on site to be able to contact that individual or at least attempt to contact, contact that individual. And it works both for uh, residential properties as well as for businesses um, too. So Mike's entered his, uh, his contact information. So go ahead. You don't, don't put your real number there. Just hit save. 
All right, so now we've got Mike's uh, contact info. He's putting, out number. He's putting out 856 numbers. A really good area code, by the way, just saying. All right, so you also see a, a box up there for COVID. Uh, even though that uh, in some areas uh, COVID is uh, uh, kind of diminished a little bit, it's still a concern on, on many people's minds. And so again, now uh, responders have that information. If someone in the house is dealing with COVID, we have that information into the system. He's also gonna put how many uh, occupants reside in the facility. It's extremely important for us when we arrive to the scene. If we arrive to the scene of a, a residential structure, and let's say when we arrive, uh, two of the individuals are outside, but we've got information letting us know that there should be five outside. That lets us know what we, what we need to do. We also will get this information at the time of alarm. And so what does that mean? That means at the time uh, the, the 911 call is sent to the firefighters, they have all of this information. They can make operational and tactical decisions on their way to the truck, on their way to the house, um, and change whatever needs to be done for a positive outcome. Now, show them the, the pet part. Pet part? Okay. And so here's another unique feature of this system. Um, in many cases, uh, inside the family, your pet is a member of the family. And so uh, we, we understand that, we believe that as well. So we have a section in there so individuals can also put their pets. So not only for uh, your children, uh, the humans in your house, but also your, your, your pets. So Mike has put his pet in there. Uh, he's also given us the vet contact information should we need to uh, contact an a vet, a vet uh, during an emergency. And we also have a picture of the dog. And also we ask citizens to put anything in there about the dog that we need to know. Uh, so perhaps if the dog is territorial uh, or the dog's a bit aggressive, that's you know, all uh, information that firefighters would need to know as we arrive on scene so we can take the, the proper precautions. And then last, Mike, show them the functional needs. So here's the functional needs. So Mike has created a, uh, a fake person, uh, Agatha DeSuma. Agatha is uh, 75 years old. Uh, this individual is uh, deaf slash hard of hearing, uh, vision impaired, has Alzheimer's and dementia, uh, and some other uh, uh, altered mental statuses. Again, very valuable information for responders to know this before we arrive. That lets us know if we need to call for additional units, uh, if we need to take further precautions as we pull up to this house. It also is information that we can pass on to our, our, our partners in law enforcement. If we arrive to a house and an individual has altered mental status, uh, they can perhaps call a specialist and they can also help de-escalate the situation uh, should we need to. Utilities and access. And then utilities and uh, access. This goes back into what Chief Jenkins was mentioning about pre-planning. Uh, one of our uh, big features is, is making sure that we understand the buildings that we're going into. Where are the utilities? How do we cut them off in the event of an emergency? And then how do we turn them back on when we, when we leave if we need to? Well, this does the same thing for your home. I believe it was last winter we saw uh, an increased number of pipes bursting uh, because of the freezing temperatures. Well, we have this information. When we arrive, we know exactly where the water cutoffs are and we can uh, take the appropriate actions. So I believe that's it for that. And then last but not least, Mike, the smoke alarms. You don't have to add a request. So here's another feature, uh, one of the, the most important. Um, here at Columbia Fire, our goal is to uh, install as many smoke alarms as possible. Uh, one way to do that is the old fashioned way. We call in and we get the request. Uh, through the system and now you'll be able to request your smoke alarms uh, through Community Connect. It will go to our public education officer and then we can schedule it and be more efficient in making sure we get these smoke alarms installed and then we can also track in the community exactly where we're installing them.